good morning everybody uh, we will study today uh, we'll we'll study today the response of non premix flame to flow perturbations so we have done <coughs> some study of how we can um, calculate the response of premix flames to flow perturbation and do you remember how we did how we did this huh. g equation so what does g equation do uh, tracks the flame front and then we <coughs> solve for the flame front. Uh, G equation um, what is G actually it is some kind of variable it, but it really has meaning only at the flame surface and uh, <coughs> now we want to um, see whether a similar approach can be done for diffusion flames. So we will uh, specifically follow uh, uh, the approach of uh, 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 Balsuran and Sujit and um, these references are given here. So first one is uh, non-linear response of diffusion flames to uniform velocity disturbances combustion science and technology uh, 2008 volume 180 page 418 to 436. Then the second one is uh, paper from journal of fluid mechanics on um, diffusion flames. Uh, there are two more from our colleagues uh, Chakravarti's group and uh, uh, that is also about non premix flame. Uh, now compared to um, <coughs> premix flame which has a very large body of literature associated with uh, its response uh, these are the only papers that you will find about diffusion flames although nowadays uh, with the reduction of NOx in uh, aero engines which still uses the um, non premix flames uh, instability is uh, um, instability in diffusion flames is becoming a subject of interest again. Uh, there is a textbook that is available uh, by T C Lewin called unsteady combustor physics Cambridge University Press chapter 11 of this book has uh, a consolidated treatment based on those papers which I mentioned. Now so this is a very recent textbook. Uh, so you must have all um, heard about classical diffusion flames uh, this is the uh, pioneering work by Burke and Schumann which is why these flames are called Burke Schumann flames this is in 1928 so we will follow their approach uh, and uh, <coughs> now the uh, we are specifically interested in looking at the unsteady problem Burke Schumann studied the steady problem. Now we are having flow and it has uh, the flame can get oscillate and wrinkle and so on. So those are the phenomena uh, which are very similar to those you would see in premix flames but there are some differences. So uh, let us take a look at the geometry. this would be um, a over ventilated flame and you will have this is the center line fuel So this uh, would be the um, classical Burke Schumann configuration or geometry. Uh, 
so you have uh, fuel coming through a slot and we are considering two dimensional here you can work out that for axisymmetric also two dimension is simpler and you have fuel coming inside oxidizer coming outside you can work out for the opposite also but this is the classical configuration and there will be a flame here which is the diffusion flame and uh, this is uh, usually uh, of course the if the uh, you can also have other flame configuration where the flame is coming and uh, attaching on the walls and and so on so this is uh, uh, over ventilated we can have under ventilated flames also then it will go on that way uh, so uh, how do we analyze this problem typically so we do this in the um, uh, framework of what is the formulation we use anybody studying combustion here schwab seldovich formulation so uh, what do you get in the end out of schwab seldovich formulation do we know this or should i do it i think i'll do it so <coughs> let us say we have uh, of course we can actually solve um, either both in the case of premix flame and in diffusion flame we can solve the conservation of species equation mass momentum energy everything and we can solve the full flow field and we can get the reaction rate out of it but why did we use the G equation approach because it was very simple okay. So the same way we will try to get a, a simple partial differential equation which we can solve to get the uh, problem you can of course do more complicated analysis but <coughs> this is the simplest possible way to do it and where some analytical solutions are possible. So So let us say we have uh, some kind of reaction so we will write the species equation for x and y star would mean dimensional and without star will be non dimensional. D is diffusivity omega is the reaction rate and uh, Wx is the molecular weight of x omega can be written as B alpha x alpha y e power Rd. So similarly sorry hmm? yeah. so similarly if there is any mistake please uh, point out. So similarly we can write the equation for y also we can see hints of advection diffusion equation here which is a very famous equation and solved but we have some unnecessary or some other term which we cannot handle so now we have to get rid of it how do we do this the way to do it is we should divide this alpha x w x down here also alpha y w y and then you will have omega and if you subtract then omega will go away so that is the key. So so if we can define our new variables scale variables and 
and we define z as x minus y that there is a difference between the scaled mass fractions. So, z is called the Schwab Zeldovich variable. So, if you redo this you get So, I subtract this from this. So, I will get x minus y is z and we write the equation in terms of this. Sorry, ah, plus, yeah, thank you. So, if I have this, Are there any questions about? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So I made a mistake here. That's for why. So this is the advection diffusion equation. So, if you compare the this equation to the G equation, there we have so the left hand side of the equations are quite similar, but here the right hand we have S L times uh, uh, del G. Uh, over there, but here we actually have a diffusion operator here, so that is the uh, that, that is the difference. So, there is some similarity, but there is some difference. The other uh, the other uh, similarity is that okay, we are writing it in terms of one variable, but the difference is, is that z is a physically meaningful variable everywhere in the field and you have to solve for it all together, whereas g we can um, uh, a g is just defined as g is as one sign on one side of the flame, another sign on other side of the flame and at, 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 at g equal to 0 there is a flame. So, we can actually uh, say like y minus psi is g and so at uh, g equal to 0 y equal to psi and write the equations directly for the flame surface in premix the flame right that is what we did. So, we said that uh, and then we put this equal to 0 and then directly write a equation for the displacement variable. Uh, so, we cannot do that here because uh, z uh, 
the shops are it's variable that had, had we uh, it's a physical variable everywhere and we have to solve for it everywhere and then we can actually find the flame surface by how do we find the flame surface so the assumption is that the flame stands at the stoichiometric surface so we have to find what is the z stoichiometric z corresponding to stoichiometry which is uh, this scaled x star so this x minus y corresponding to the stoichiometry and that would be the flame surface so uh, from that you can get the flame surface and then we can track the flame movement i hope this is this is clear so there is some strong parallel but there is some strong differences also between uh, diffusion flames and premixed flames even in the results in terms of the transfer function we will see some strong parallels and some differences now we will proceed to solve for it so we need to apply boundary conditions uh, without which we cannot solve any problem so let us examine what are the boundary conditions here so here in the inlet there is fuel there is oxidizer in reality you can have uh, the oxidizer can diffuse and the products can actually diffuse into the uh, fuel stream similarly fuel can diffuse into oxidizer so we will ignore those effects and we say that here at the inlet plane uh, uh, in in this location we have fuel so uh, we will have no oxidizer and in this location we have only oxidizer at the inlet plane so that is the way we are going to enforce the uh, boundary conditions just need one more notation I am following the uh, symbols from the textbook on um, uh, by Tim Louisville on um, combustion dynamics so this uh, half width is w1 this half width of the outer tube is w2 okay So this basically means uh, that in the oxidizer tube we have oxidizer and in the fuel tube we have fuel that is all and uh, enforcing this boundary condition also enables us to obtain an analytical solution as opposed to the, if you enforce the flux boundary condition you would have difficulty in getting analytical solution. So in reality there is axial diffusion of fuel into the oxidizer and vice versa that axial diffusion of oxidizer into the fuel. So the solution must be obtained over a larger domain that includes the supply lines of fuel oxidizer. So I think let us correct the figure let us call this bigger outer tube a W1 and this is a W2. So this boundary condition implicitly neglects the uh, axial diffusion at uh, x equal to 0 and uh, we can um, assume symmetry boundary condition at the center line right. So and uh, no diffusion should happen through the walls because you have rigid wall
and uh, as x tends to infinity z must attain a finite value finally. So, we will derive a solution in the limit of small perturbations that is we expand everything as some 0th order plus first order uh, or a base flow plus uh, perturbation and uh, then we can get the solution. In fact, you do not need to do this because our equation is a linear equation provided u is a input uh, and you can see it is a linear equation. Uh, so, we do not need to do it, but it is very convenient and it will enable us to work out analytical solution. So, we will do that. So, any parameter I am following low events notation which is a function of x and t can be written as some base flow So, with this approach we will be able to derive a explicit analytical expression for the flame surface and this will be uh, very nice in looking at the controlling features of the flame dynamics. Okay. So, first we will study the problem in the absence of forcing so that we can get the steady solution and then we will look at the uh, problem with forcing. So, in our previous notation this would be z bar and u bar, but I am just following Leuven's book here so that uh, you can follow it also. So, this can be solved with separation of variables. I, I, I can work it out next class, but um, the, I, I just want to write the solution here. So, just try if you would get this. Uh, actually, you should get some more complicated expression here, but then if you take Peclet number tending very large, then it should reduce to this expression. So, I will just let you work this out, um, uh, bring it next class, and then we will see uh, what you got and what I have. Now, uh, this quantity Peclet number may be in this class we are introducing for the first time. So, it needs some explanation. So, Peclet number uh, physically corresponds to the of course, all numbers correspond to ratio of time scales or length scales or something like that. So, here it corresponds to the relative time scale ratio of the relative time scales for the two phenomena convection and diffusion. So, we want to transport mass over a distance w 2 uh, that is this and what are the time scales involved.
so uh, so basically we want tau diffusion divided by tau convection so tau convection is pretty straightforward the distance divided by the velocity now what is uh, tau diffusion So let us do a little analysis. So this is the heat equation. So if you So, if you get the length scales, so this is the uh, uh, um, the length squared over diffusion. That's the uh, uh, diffusive uh, time scale so this is the formula for a equal to Peckley number p e people write Peckley number for convection, Peckley number for diffusion, so uh, both are uh, uh, referred to by the same Peckley number, but here it is we are talking about diffusion. So how do you, so having got an expression for the uh, is it not the schwab seldovich variable, how do you determine the where the flame sheet is, so what is the assumption in Bergschumann? So the flame flame is like a sheet. Means we are uh, the inherent assumption in Bergström and flame is that you are having infinite reaction rate compared to the other processes. Reaction rate is much faster compared to convection and diffusion. So the flame is really thin sheet, and this happens. So you solve for the Z field, and where you have the stoichiometric contour, where, where wherever you have so, so you have fuel diffusing out, oxidizer diffusing in. So there is a field of x and a field of y, right? There's a uh, uh, there's a uh, uh, fuel mass fraction as contours, oxidation mass fraction contours. So uh, uh, somewhere, so if you look inside, you will have more fuel compared to oxidizer because naturally fuel is coming out. If you if I look somewhere here, there will be more oxidizer than fuel because fuel is diffusing out, but predominantly it's oxidizer. But somewhere down in between. Um, the uh, concentration would be equal to uh, of both fuel and air will be that of stoichiometric mixture and the flame stands there. So this is the flame sheet assumption. So we use that to locate the uh, position of the flame. So this is the assumption in, um, in a real uh, non premixed flame for example you will have other phenomena such as triple flame, flame standoff and so on because the walls may quench. So reaction may not happen here so there may be a little bit premix mixture here and and so on so there are those complicated uh, finite rate chemistry effects that happen but here we don't have any of that so uh, because we are referring to classical bergstrom so all we have to do is to take this and put is it not as is it as t and uh, this would be the flame position okay 
and we, it will be an implicit ex expression. So, we will have to solve backwards or iteratively or something. I will work out next class I told you the whole solution, but it is there, it is there in this solution just try this out you can take that equation and use separation of variables if it does not work out I will do it next class. Now one remark I want to make is suppose you are solving in a circular geometry then can you imagine how these expressions would look like. they would be in terms of Bessel functions, Bessel functions yeah. So, that is the difference here it will be in sines and cos because we are in a 2D geometry. So, next we want to get the flame right. So, we just have to put this term as 1, so that way you will get the maximum uh, position and that is the flame length. So, in the thermoacoustic problem this duct will be long and there will be acoustic field and the there will be a certain part velocity fluctuation here which will affect the, uh, the mixing here right I mean which is governed by the advection diffusion equation that would result in the flame fluctuating it will result in the heat release rate fluctuating. Now, that will drive the acoustic field which in turn will give the feedback. So, now we are not studying that problem here I am not working out in the class, but we uh, one of the references in that list talked about that, but here what I am going to do is to impose a velocity fluctuation here and see what happens to the flame. So, will the flame dance will it wrinkle will it move up and down uh, that kind of thing. So, what we have is a uh, base flow field that is even if there was no fluctuation you will have fuel and oxidizer and they will diffuse out and there will be a flame. Now, perturb it with certain velocity fluctuations uh, how can you uh, do a velocity fluctuations you you say u is uh, mean plus u bar plus some u prime uh, and u prime goes like some sin omega t or uh, in an experiment you you can uh, put a valve and fluctuate the flow rate or something like that and then see what happens to the equation. Our advection diffusion equation is an unsteady equation we drop the steady term to get the base flow, but now you have to put the uh, term back in and solve for it. So, what we need to do is to, so u x naught was the base flow in this convention u x 1 is the perturbation. I just follow the convention in this textbook of Leuven and uh, we had So, if you split it as uh, z naught plus z prime what you will get is this. 
So, this will have a mean time fluctuation here plus mean here time fluctuation there. Okay. So, that is why the two terms. This is the perturbed equation. I will, yeah. Epsilon is like a um, how much, uh, like you have, um, um, so the total u equal to ux comma. So, this is the total velocity field. So, epsilon is like uh, what is the uh, like the amplitude of the perturbations as a fraction of the mean velocity. Okay. So, again we can solve this, try to solve this, it will be an interesting exercise. If you do not get it, that is completely fine, I will solve it here in the class, but just try it, it is kind of interesting, I think. F is I mean uh, two omega is two pi f. We can we can simplify the expression because if you take a look at the expression for z naught, and if you differentiate it, you will get this scaling term sitting in front. We had the formula for Z naught in your book. So, if you use this, um, these terms are that is here. So, you can write without the sigma as E z 1 equal to
where uh, C S T W 2 is equal to F W 2 over U x comma 0. Now, let us multiply top and bottom by L f and L f. So, this can be written as F L f u x comma 0 into w 2 by L f. This is equal to S T L f w 2 by L f. So, So, this we have used in here and you get this expression. So, please uh, check on this. So, this is the expression for the perturbed z field. So, you have the base flow plus the perturbed z field. Now, so we have solved for the entire thing, although that is not what we are looking for, we just want the final what happens to the flame, but there is no option but to solve for this. Now, from this we want to look at what happens to the flame and how the flame oscillates. We will do that next class and we will also look at the um, derivation of these things in case you are ha having difficulty. So, stop here now. <laughs>